Good morning. My name is Matthias Schreitz, and I will give a presentation about our DAG architecture for autonomous interactive robots. There are several desiderata that we have for autonomous robots in the future. For one, we want them to be taskable in natural language. They should be adaptable online, allow for fast and interactive task learning from humans, should be capable of multimodal interactions, uh, support long-term autonomous operation, be capable of detecting faults and recovering from errors, and have introspective access to knowledge and system operations, have built-in security measures at all levels of the system and uh, built-in ethical decision-making and ethical behavior, and should finally be able to produce explanations and justifications if desired. Classical cognitive architectures uh, have been used for over 40 years now to provide architectural mechanisms for acquiring knowledge and for investigating different learning strategies. While these classical cognitive architectures, for example, ACT or SOAR, have been used on robots, they were not originally designed for the control of embodied agents. And as a result, they lack capabilities that are required for the autonomous long-term operation of robots. And here are some of them, such as the continuous multimodal sensory processing or motor control, intuitive actions, tight sensory motor connections, real-time distributed processing, motion and navigation planning, platform introspection and hardware awareness, fault detection recovery, and so forth. So these are reasons and there are others that classical cognitive architectures are not really well suited uh, to run the long-term operation of robots. The distributed integrated affect cognition reflection architecture or short DIARC architecture was specifically designed in the early 2000s uh, to work on embodied agents in real time interactive settings in a fault tolerant manner. DIARC has deep ties into the underlying operating system, enabling deep introspection and monitoring of all aspects of the implementing system as well as scalable operation across multiple diverse computing platforms. Overall, DIRC has unique features that are not present in other cognitive architectures, such as multi-level introspection, fault detection and recovery, deep integration of natural language understanding, access control at multiple levels and ethical reasoning, component sharing among different agents architectures. I will specifically focus on the last two in this presentation. Here's an overview of the architecture. You can see the architecture diagram with the components roughly divided into perception, reasoning, and action-based components. Here, for example, on the left, you get the speech understanding route with the re uh, uh, speech recognizer, the parser, and the reference resolution component, the dialogue manager, uh, the natural language generation, uh, speech synthesis part, but here is a perceptual pathway. Vision could be other types of perception. Uh, the goal manager that uh, understands what to do with the percepts, the beliefs uh, and short-term memories are stored here. The belief component, this is also the component that makes various inferences and potentially plans actions. There's uh, typically here uh, an, a task or an action plan as well. The control for the motors can be manipulation, but also manipul uh, navigation commands. All these components that you see here uh, process information asynchronously to each other. So there's no uh, perceive think act loop in this architecture, even though each component might operate on a cognitive cycle. And it can have multiple threads of control. For example, the perception or NLU or action execution components, all are highly parallelized. Goals are explicitly represented in terms of pre-operating and post conditions and have priority that is computed based on urgency, expected utilities and overall affective state of the system, which is computed in turn from each component. And these goals uh, uh, and uh, sorry, these evaluations uh, of, of urgency uh, are attached to skills that accomplish them together with the pre and the post conditions. Behavior arbitration is distributed and priority based and uh, uses locking mechanisms for mutual exclusion. Different forms of learning can occur in different components. There's not just one architectural learning uh, 
uh, algorithm implemented statistical learning, for example, in components close to perception and action, symbolic learning in higher level components, for example, the task planner or the reasoner. Knowledge representations can take different forms within components, depending on the nature of the process. So for example, the vision system might just have saliency maps and textures stored inside, whereas the parser might have dependency graphs, the reasoner might have logical clauses and rules, something similar to productions and so forth. Logical expressions are used as the common currency across the architecture and is what is exchanged between components independent of what the data representation is within a component. It is what allows the architecture to have introspective access to uh, its knowledge and information that's being exchanged as well as system capabilities and features. There's also hooks into the implementation platform that allow for deep introspection monitoring and discovery of system features, but also failures. Uh, of the list that I introduced initially, uh, the architecture is capable of all of these items, but I will demonstrate specifically in the first demonstration, the task of building a natural language, introspective access, built-in security, ethical decision-making, and the ability to generate explanations and justifications. First, when a system gets an instruction, the immediate uh, introspective process needs to look at whether the system is even capable of doing what is being instructed. So it has to ask itself, can I do it in general? If it can do it in general, it can move on. If it cannot do it in general, it needs, it needs to let the person know that it can do it and not just not do anything. If it knows that it can do it in general, it needs to determine whether it actually can do it now. If it can do it now, it can move on. If it cannot do it now, it needs to say again why it cannot do it right now. If it can do it now, it has to check if it's obligated to do it, because if it doesn't have the obligation, it should say that it cannot do it. Maybe it might not even be admit, not uh, permitted to do it. Uh, certainly needs to tell the user that the user is not authorized to do it. And finally, if all of this checks out, the question is, is whether the instruction is ethical. Is it okay relative to a set of rules and norms that the robot has? In, if it is not, it needs to again, tell the person why it's rejecting the command uh, with recourse to the principles that make it impossible for the robot to carry out the command. In addition to this reasoning, uh, it's important to really make sure that uh, access to sensitive information is controlled and that uh, a robot never carries out instructions or provides information to people that are not uh, allowed to get that information or shouldn't get it. We've developed three access levels that can be adapted and extended. One is the general one not trusted. This is a person that the robot doesn't know usually. Uh, such a person can ask the robot basic questions, can give basic instructions, but uh, none that are not deemed ethical or that require the robot to believe facts that it cannot verify independently. If on the other hand, a trusted person interacts with the robot, they can, tell, they can tell the robot new facts and rules that the robot cannot verify and it will believe it because they're, trust, they're trusted. 
and it can also retract. Uh, they can make the robot retract items from its memory. So forget facts, uh, unless that information itself is protected. They can also confer trust on other agents and remove trust unless that information again is protected. And finally, the highest level is admin. This is the person that can change essentially anything in the robot's configuration, knowledge base and database, uh, can teach the robot new behaviors, modify existing behaviors, can change trust levels of other agents, and in general change any system configuration. Okay, and the second demonstration I would like to show is one that hits on, again, taskability, uh, but also online adaptation, multimodal interaction, introspective access, ethical decision-making, and producing explanations and justifications. In this case, we have a subset of the architecture depicted here with two different robot components in here that are both uh, representations of the robot sensing and actuation capabilities uh, we have multiple different speech recognition, natural language components that allow for multi-human instruction. We have one shared dialogue manager, one shared knowledge base, and one shared goal manager. And this is a, a demonstration of the utility of sharing such components across architectures because they allow for immediate utilization of one, uh, what one robot knows in another robot. And I want to demonstrate how that can lead to reasoning across agents that can therefore carry out commands that they could not carry out otherwise. So this is a demonstration how the robot in front who didn't have sensors in the rear was able to determine 
Nevertheless, that the error was safe by using the percept of the robot behind and automatically making an inference based on that percept that if the area was safe in front of that robot, the area behind it in the back was safe as well. So to conclude, I briefly described some of the design principles and theoretical commitments of our robotic dark architecture and focused on two unique features, the ethical reasoning and access control, and also the component sharing of architectural components across agents. Demonstrated in several robot settings, the utility of these features for autonomy and interaction and ongoing work on DIRC is focused on improving several of these features, in particular task-based dialogues, making uh, them even more introspectively accessible, uh, improve robot resilience with more monitoring and fault handling, and also improve human machine teaming with planning methods that use shared mental models. Wanted to quickly acknowledge uh, former students who have worked on some of these systems, uh, uh, current students and staff who helped with the demonstrations you just saw, uh, funding provided by different uh, organizations in the United States, and uh, if you're interested in papers, they are available on this link. And we have several uh, robot videos on this other link. And finally, wanted to make an announcement that uh, hopefully later this month, we will release our open source DIAC architecture for you to try out. Thank you.